Hi, <laughs> how are you? So this video is gonna take a little bit of explanation. Um, hmm, where do I start? So I was filming a 24 hour readathon hosted every month and I was having a great time. It was a grand time, one may even venture to say, I would say. And I got a, an email from work and this is literally why I don't check my work emails when I'm not working and this is what I need to remember to not do that. And it just like completely ruined the weekend. So <laughs> now that that anxiety has subsided, I'm going to try to finish out this readathon because I actually realized I had done perfectly 12 hours. And so we're gonna do another 12 starting today. So it is 3 p.m. now. And why not ruin tomorrow by staying up till 3 p.m. tonight, you know? So. We'll get into what happened, what I'm reading. We have to go to the past for a little bit, and uh, technically this is a past, but we'll go to the past or past. But first we gotta thank our sponsor for this video, which is Ana Luisa. So this is a necklace actually that I'm wearing by Ana Luisa. I absolutely adore their jewelry. They are a very sustainable brand. That's one of the biggest parts of their company that I really, really love. So some of the other things about Ana Luisa is that they are carbon neutral, which means 100% of the carbon emissions related to their project's life cycle are offset. They have very fair prices with their jewelry starting at $39, and there is no luxury markup, but I will tell you they do feel like luxury pieces. They have exceptional quality. They are long lasting pieces crafted with care from the best noble metals with a one year warranty, which is really nice. And to ensure that they have the highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste, they do have limited batches. And one thing, because of where we're at in this time of year, this is also a really good gift for a mother, a mother figure, literally anyone in your life that you would look at that way with Mother's Day coming up. And I know that I have already gifted my mom some things from Ana Luisa. I got her a pair of huggy hoop earrings, which are really cute, and now I want, so I have to go back and buy those as well. Because, you know, it's also a gift for yourself. So multiple, multiple ways you could use this for gifting, self-care, self-love, self-gifting all of that. And in relation to Mother's Day, they're actually going to be having a Mother's Day sale. So from April 12th, it will be 15% off the entire website. And like I said, they already have incredibly good pricing and fair pricing starting at $39. So it's an even better deal than before. But the last day to guarantee shipping before Mother's Day would be May 5th. So definitely make sure you check out the link and everything down below in the description to make sure that you get yours on time. So again, thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get into some books that I'm actually reading because of my mom. So the first one I attempted to pick up in this is Misery, and it was Misery. I didn't like it. One of her favorites. Honestly, I got so bored within the first 10% that I put it down for this video because I could already feel the slump coming on, and I finished so many books recently in a row that I was like, we don't have time for a slump, and this must be the reason I'm feeling slumpy. So I picked up two books. My mom and I bonded very much over 2020, Dateline, true crime, all that stuff. We still do. I didn't really feel like picking up a true crime book for this though because they are so dense and heavy and big that a 12 hour a thon essentially was not a good time for that. So I'm picking up one that's kind of inspired by one. Actually, they both are. So let me let me explain. One's a reread, and that is Stalking Jack the Ripper. This is about Audrey Rose, who wants nothing more than to be a autopsy, a medical examiner, I believe. And, you know, in Victorian times, the girls weren't, like, allowed to think, let alone do stuff like that. Okay, y'all. So, <laughs> there's a noticeable change in the quality of the camera, as well as the sound. There's no mic now, because my other camera died and I uh, don't have a second battery for that one yet. 
So we are on my vlog camera, which I actually don't even use for vlogging really anymore because I'm obsessed with that other camera. But uh, I was gonna wait for it to charge and then I realized I'm in a readathon. I like have to, I have to go. Could I film this later? Yes, but will I? Probably not. So in the meantime, I did put on nails and um, now we're ready. So back to what I was saying, uh, this is just basically YA historical fiction. Uh, they're trying to find out who Jack the Ripper is. That's when it takes place. I love this series. Like I said, it's a reread for me and I'm excited to get back into it. And then I have a thriller that I've been meaning to read for a while. And this is Darling Rose Gold. I am very excited for this one. I'm very hyped for this one. I've heard, honestly, nothing but good things. So I think that's a good sign. But it's basically, if you know anything about the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case, uh, where there was Munchausen's by proxy involved, and she ended up killing her mom, there is the same element in here of the Munchausen's, but it is not resulting in murder. It is about the mom coming home from prison, I guess, after that and just detailing the daughter living with her mother after all of that occurs. Um, so I think that's interesting. And this is also related to true crime because it's very much like the Gypsy Rose case. Uh, and yeah, I'm just excited to read it. So while this may not look like Mother's Day reads, they are because this is what my mom and I like. This is what we're about. So now that we have established what I will be reading at the end of this TBR, we have to go back in time to the beginning. And this is going to be a mess, but uh, we got, the, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So back to the beginning. It was, it was a dark and stormy night when I first started this read. Okay, hi, hello. I am so excited for this video, which is so great because I had to just film the outro for that and we're done now. We are moving on to a 24 hour reading, reading blah, 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 blah. a 24 hour reading vlog. So technically it starts, mm, I'm not gonna do that math, but actually I think it's 10 hours, but honestly, maybe 10 and a half. It's 1.27 right now. It starts tonight at 12 a.m. and it is hosted by Mel, Christine, Kristen, and Jalisa. I will leave them down below linked because they do this every month. So if you're ever looking for a 24 hour readathon, this is where you go to them because they have it. They're doing reading sprints. I know Mel is doing some reading sprints tonight from 12 to three, so I'm definitely gonna join in on those. I'm going to my mom's before, so I'm either gonna have to take a nap after this or take a nap after I get back from my mom's so that I can stay up as late as possible tonight. But I wanted to film this clip now because once we get into the reading, I'm gonna be looking rough, feeling rough, but trying my best. And I've never stayed up 24 hours before. Because, I don't know if you know this, but I have epilepsy, so I really shouldn't do that. But I am going to try to stay up as late as possible and maybe take a little couple naps every so often to make up for it. But honestly, I'll probably end up going asleep, going asleep, just <laughs> fading out, uh, going to sleep after the reading sprints tonight and then wake up for, I believe, Christine's reading sprints tomorrow morning not sure but they're at like 10 a.m my time which is perfect because it's just enough time to fall asleep hopefully and when i when i stay up until like three or four in the morning i don't have a problem falling asleep like i just 
knocked out dead to the world. So let's get in to my TBR. So my TBR is a little weird for this because it's really just portions of books. I'm not looking to finish any of these except for one I am because I'm already in the middle of it and that one is These Violent Delights. So I am already almost halfway through this. I'm absolutely loving it. It gave me such strong Diviners vibes in the um, prologue. So if you like that, I definitely recommend. But it's like, this feels very much like Peaky Blinders in Shanghai meets the paranormal aspect of the Diviners. It's just everything I love. It's just everything I love. It's just everything I love. And I... I'm excited to finish it, keep going with it. I did also pick up the audiobook on Scribd so that I can listen while I read, but I didn't love just listening to the audiobook. For some reason, I could not follow along very well. So I'm going to read it as I listen to it, hopefully during the reading sprints when those are happening tonight. But this is the only one that I actually plan on like for sure finishing because I have like, I think, 200 pages left in it. So that's very doable. The next one, this one I may finish. It just depends. I'm in the mood for a pirate book. So I picked this one up for that. And it is Fable by Adrienne Young. So I have read one other book by her. It was about Vikings and it was good. Like it was objectively well written and it was interesting, but I just didn't love it plot and character wise. Like I just didn't feel connected to the characters at all. I didn't feel like invested in the plot but I did like the writing so I'm hoping if I have the same writing but just a more interesting plot characters and whatnot I'm gonna like this and I've heard a ton of really good things about this so like usual I don't know anything about it yet but once I get into it I'll come back and I'll explain it don't you even worry is that a fly <laughs> I've heard there's dark academia. I've heard there is murder and mystery and mayhem, and I love all those M's. So I was gonna pick it up anyways, but someone yesterday said it's basically middle grade Dan Brown. That pushed me over the edge. That was it, because if you don't know, we are a Dan Brown stan account, and of course I'm gonna pick up anything that's like him. So this is the mystery of Black Hollow Lane. It is middle grade. I don't know anything about it, other than it is probably the prettiest cover that you've ever seen. It is the one that I've ever seen. And I'm excited to get into it because I love the like aesthetic that Dark Academia has. And I like, I mean, this matches what I think of when I think of that. But then also murder, mystery, secret societies. Listen, I had no choice. I had no choice. I had to pick it up. So that's what we're doing. We're picking it up. And this is another one. It really just depends on where I go because after I finish these Violent Delights, it's either this or Fable that I'll be reading. And they're both short. Like this is barely 300 pages. I think the same with Fable. So it's very likely that I would finish one of these. I just don't know if I'll finish both of them. So we'll see. And then next up, because I am easily influenced, this is the last one because it is a chunker of a book, but Mel is currently reading The Diviners for the first time. So of course, I see Diviners, I read Diviners. This will be my ninth time, I think, reading this book. I'm okay. I'm doing just fine. Thank you for asking. I don't plan to read this unless I just need a break from the other books, and this is like my go-to comfort read because why wouldn't a demon serial killer let loose in 1920s New York uh, with people that are essentially like X-Men with their powers and whatnot? Why would I not find that comforting? I don't know, couldn't tell you. Like I said, this one I do know a lot about. So we have Evie O'Neill who is, basically she's pushed off to New York because she was drinking and partying in her hometown and her parents wanted her to stop. So naturally you send her to New York City in the 1920s and that's definitely not happening there. So she goes and she has this power of when she touches things, she can see people's memories or feelings and thoughts associated with those items and mainly their secrets. That's the part that is both, both useful and a problem for people. 
So she goes, she meets a bunch of other people there. They all seem to have these powers. And while they are figuring this out and they're trying to solve the mystery of all of these dead bodies showing up in New York, she finds that um, the, it's a demon serial killer. So what I love about this is they have a song for him, first of all, that is creepy as heck. I... It gets stuck in my head all the time. It's already stuck in my head right now. And the audiobook is fantastic. The prologue in the audiobook is hilarious though because you know a Ouija board like spells out the letters and they're spelling it out really really fast on the audiobook and I'm just like I don't know any any word you just said. None of them were real words. They were letters and they are in the alphabet but none of them mean anything to me because I, I just every time it happens I'm just like ooh brain empty. I don't know what you're spelling. I still honestly am not sure. I didn't know until I actually read it physically <laughs> what the heck they were spelling. Um, it wasn't that great. I wasn't missing that much, but I really recommend this to anybody ever of all time because it's my favorite book of all time and um, that's my agenda. That's why we're here today, to push this book onto you. So here you go. Take it. Take it. So yeah, um, that's my TBR stack. Could, could go well, could go horrible. This footage may not see the light of day. Who really knows? But for now, it is, yeah, it's 1.40. So I need to edit a couple Instagram pictures that can go up tomorrow of this stack. And then for Sunday, I need to take a bookshelf picture. But other than that, I'm going to actually do some editing so I can get that taken care of. And I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. I can just have the video go live and everything's fine and right in the world. So... Let's go do that, get prepped for this readathon. Yes. Yes. Readathon setup. So, we have the iPad, it's charging so that I can uh, get on the sprints when they happen. We have Drake drinking water right on time, as you do. The TBR that I care about tonight. Two candles in case my nose runs out of patience for the other smell. Coffee, venti, the full thing, no decaf. We are not, I can't say that word on my channel, blanking out on this. Water, it's full. Gender rules, still dead. Water, extra water to put in this water that has ice. Headphones. Let's go, Titans. Oh lord, no. This isn't gonna work. Let's let's go to the chair. You know what? This is what we got. So last night I stayed up until three, which was a choice. And I got to chapter 23, which is page 270. So that is good. We are here. I have this much left. Um Christine is about to start her readings for actually I think I'm late. Yeah, I'm 15 minutes late. 15 minutes late showing up with Starbucks. That's me. But I'm gonna jump on there and I'm gonna finish this book. That is the plan. I only got four hours of sleep last night, which is amazing that I'm awake right now. So once that's done, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a chapter of this and then a chapter of this and then I guess the sun's just gonna go away. That's cool, didn't need you or anything. Uh, and then I'm just gonna keep switching off a chapter, a chapter, a chapter, a chapter. Because when I did that last time when I was doing my winter 24 hour readathon, like during the storm, I did not finish the call because it was honestly boring, but I did read a lot of it because I was motivated to get through the chapter to go to another one because I realized I really like books where there's two different point of views or multiple point of views because it motivates me to get through the ones that I may not like as much so that I can get to the ones I really enjoy. And then usually by the end, I end up enjoying all the points of views. There's just, you know, you favor one typically. So I figured I could kind of make that happen with 
books by like reading one or the other, like, you know, every one on and off. So that is the plan for this. I'm going to eat some hash browns that I got, drink this coffee. We are on coffee round two for the day. And then we're gonna finish this book and I'm excited about it. I have to say, y'all, let's talk about these violent delights really quick because there was a scene. There's a scene in here. It was the chapter, what is it, 20, 22, I think, where they have to hug and a gun is behind and pew pew. And that's all I'm gonna say because if you've read it, you get it. If not, I want you to fully feel that scene. Uh, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, heart palpitations. I haven't had these in a while. Like it was so good. It was right on there with how I felt about the door scene with Where Dreams Descend. Like it was just uh, all the feelings, all of them at once in my soul, in my body. I could not handle it. I screamed at 2.30 in the morning because I was just like, oh my. So yeah, to say I'm loving this is an understatement of the century. It's fantastic. It is so, so freaking good. It is to me. I, cause okay, I, I do this a lot and people either comment that it annoys them or that they like it. And honestly, it's just how my brain works. So I'm sorry if you're in the former, but I love relating books to TV shows or movies that I've seen because it really helps me picture the book and if I would like it better because I first of all love books that are written in a way that I can picture them almost like a movie or a TV show because there are some that I cannot with the writing style, but this one I can. And I would pitch this as The Diviners, which I know is a book, but it is the book. You know what I'm saying? So The Diviners meets Peaky Blinders because it is just fantastic. I was talking to my friend Mel last night and we I was like, who did you picture as Roma? Because I can't, I always try to find like an actor or someone to picture as the person and I just couldn't. Daniel Sherman was who I was going with because when I looked it up on Google, people had fan casted him and I was like, oh, okay, I can see that. He's like, he's pretty goofy, soft boy vibes, which is what Roma has. So I could, I could go with that. But then I was like, my brain, for whatever reason, I went on YouTube and I saw one of my favorite uh, reaction channels, Trin, reacting to 10 Things I Hate About You. And I was like, what if I just pictured him as Heath Ledger from 10 Things I Hate About You? So that's what I'm doing now. And honestly, to be fair, if it is ever described, like the character's ever described as a white dude with curly long hair, that's who I picture. And I don't have shame and I won't say sorry. And it's just me living my best life, to be honest. So in conclusion, we are gonna go chug this entire thing to put some spirit in my soul. Pep in my step. One of those is a thing that makes sense to say. And we're gonna finish this book and it's gonna be a great time and I'm excited. Are you excited? Let's, let's go do it, cause we're excited. Also, sidebar, I just wanna show you how much this plant is thriving. One, two, three, four new leaves and it looks good. Just good, like just look at ugh, perfection. I'm like a river that's overflowed. The sooner you know it, the less do we hurt. Let me speak the truth. I know you don't want to face it, you think it's too late, but I can see past the rain. Won't you let Hey, hello, hi. So, <laughs> just finished a workout and a nap I had no intention of taking. And now, we're back. We're back, we're back. And we're gonna read. So, I, it's four o'clock. I've still not finished these Violent Delights, but I'm really close. So I think that I'm still going to be able to finish it and I'll be able to get a good way through the other two, I just had some stuff happen this morning that I was too anxious to focus, but I'm still too anxious, but I'm gonna force myself to focus. We're gonna make this work. So that's the plan. That's all I got for you. Turn the page and burn it. Let's make up a big bonfire on the beach with the stars as our light. Throw our problems in the flame. Throw our problems in the flame. 
hi wow this is way too tall just got out of the shower because I have a little bit of a headache and I wanted a shower as soon as I got home but I wanted to update as part of this like second half at an attempt at this 24-hour readathon and this book is the one inspired by my mother i'm picking up misery i have the audiobook of it so i'm just gonna be listening to that i'm gonna go close the blinds put on my face mask and listen to this and just zone well not zone out because i need to pay attention zen out just chill i guess one may say uh this is my mom's favorite Okay, my camera keeps cutting in and out, so I'm just gonna go because that's a sign. Uh, this is one of her faves between this and the stand, and I guess we'll see how I like it. I hope I like it better than I... Uh, I liked it, I guess. Um, I liked more the fact that I got to watch the movie after I finished it, but uh, maybe, maybe I'll like this one more. I don't know. We'll see. I hope so, because my mom loves it. Problems in the flame. Throw our problems in the flame. And throw our problems in the flames. Ooh, throw our problems in the flame. I get a little bit breathless. Okay, so I have started with Darling Rose Gold. I'm only, I've read one chapter from the mom's point of view, one chapter from the daughter at Rose Gold's point of view, and I, I'm already really liking this. I think it's really creepy. I really enjoy the fact that we're getting um, both points of view because the mom is like a lot. Like I knew she was going to be a lot considering what this is about and what happened and why she was in prison, but it's just a lot. I would have to say... If you're sensitive to manipulation or any issues like that or like this kind of relationship thing, I would not read this because it would definitely, I think would probably be triggering because it's very detailed about like all of the stuff that Rose Gold went through as well as what the mom did and like she's very aware of what she was doing but also she's kind of like not aware of it because she's like she says things like well where were the nurses whenever I was the one cleaning up after her being sick at 3 a.m. like if that's if I was being so mean to her and hurting her and it's just like she clearly thinks that she was doing something good for her kid but also like on some level no she wasn't so it's layered, but I'm gonna go take my makeup off now and I'm going to go read this while I walk on the treadmill because I'm feeling a little restless and it seems like a nice thing to do. And I'm gonna drink this liter of water because again, another nice thing to do. Hello everybody. So it's actually been a couple days since the readathon technically ended, but I did end up finishing Darling Rose Gold. This is the only one I finished out of the second round of this. I did not get to Stocking Jack the Ripper because I didn't want to rush it. I wanted to read it and take my time with it and just have an all around good time. So I did not read it, but I did really enjoy Darling Rose Gold. I gave it four stars. The ending. So I looked on Goodreads and a lot of people said it was a very predictable ending. And I agree that the overall thing that happened was technically predictable. However, I don't agree that how it happened was predictable. Like the exact way it all played out I don't think was predictable. I think it was actually really well executed and I really enjoyed the way that it turned out. So I definitely recommend that if you want a psychological thriller that has true crime inspired. But yeah, that's it for my 24 hour readathon. I think, you know, <laughs> we're gonna have a better one next month. Let's just say that. Well, technically this month, later this month, we'll have a better one, hopefully. 
But thank you again so much to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the link in the description down below to get a discount on your purchase, whether it's a gift for you, your mom, your friends, whomever in your life. And the emoji of the day is going to be a purple heart because it sounds good to me. And uh, I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are. And I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.